Hello everyone and welcome to the ninth session of our Mocratic Hardware series. This session is the last episode of our product reviews of Mocratic's current inventory of Ethernet routers. And in this video, we'll be reviewing the CCR2004 1G 12S Plus 2XS. This Ethernet router can be regarded as the pioneer of a new generation of Mocratic Ethernet routers and it's available for $595. Similar to the CCR1072, the CCR2004 Ethernet router is currently a standalone software without any current variations. Just like all other CCR Ethernet routers, the three letters CCR at the beginning of this hardware's name stand for Cloud Core Router. The very first digit of the number that follows, that is 2, shows that unlike all previous CCR devices, this product belongs to the 2XXX series. And the last two digits of the same number, that is 04, tell us that this router has four CPU cores. The characters 1G show that this device has a single 1 gigabit Ethernet port. The characters 12S Plus represent the 12 SFB Plus ports on this device. And finally, the characters 2XS at the end of the product code tell us that the CCR2004 is equipped with a pair of the new generation SFB ports, the SFB28, which carries a 25 gigabytes per second throughput. On the front, you can see the port arrangement of this device that includes two SFB28 ports, 12 SFB Plus ports, a serial console, as well as a single Ethernet port. On the back, you can see that this device has two power supplies that can be used to prevent unexpected downtimes, a heat sink that is highly efficient in keeping the device within the recommended temperature range, and a pair of cooling fans that are responsible for keeping the device up and running. As previously mentioned, the CCR2004, just like the CCR1072, does not have any variations, and it is currently the only Microtech Ethernet router of the 2XXX series. Thus, we can review the product specific page for specification information. As can be seen, the CCR2004 uses the newer ARM 64-bit CPU architecture and has a CPU with four cores and a 1.7 GHz frequency. It comes with a level 6 router OS license, 4 GB of RAM, and 120 MB of local storage. Its lifetime is about 200,000 hours at 25 degrees Celsius. It operates within the minus 20 degrees and 60 degrees Celsius range and it also supports hardware acceleration and traffic encryption. It has two AC input power supplies, a max power consumption of 49 watts which is notably low for a device with such port arrangements and two active fans. As mentioned in the beginning, the CCR2004 has one Ethernet port 12 SFB Plus ports and 2 SFB28 ports. The only peripheral equipment on this device is its RJ45 serial console and it has three types of monitors for performance status. At the bottom of this page, you have a number of related products including SFB modules and power supply replacements that can be used with the CCR2004. The block diagram of the CCR2004 shows that unlike a number of other CCR devices, the SFB Plus and SFB28 ports connect to the CPU via a passive intelligent port extender, also known as a pipe, whereas the Ethernet port directly connects to the CPU. You also have the 100 to 240 volt integrated dual power supply unit for power failover and maximum uptime. Also, as in the case of other Microtech hardware with SFB ports, we recommend that you refer to the SFB compatibility wiki page to find out which SFB modules work with your device. On the same page, you can also find useful information concerning the different SFB ports of various Microtech devices. For instance, the SFB Plus ports on some Microtech hardware, including the CCR2004, can be used in the 1 gigabit mode. Performance-wise, Based on packet sizes, device modes, and OS configurations, the maximum throughput the CCR2004 yields is nearly 40 gigabytes per second. 
Note that all the throughput values in these tables are the total speed of all active ports at any given time. Also, you have the IPsec test results table that represents the throughput you can receive from the CCR2004 when this device is used for traffic encryption. As always, given the varied port arrangements and throughputs of different devices, the network planning process should be based upon a number of basic but vital pieces of information, including the intended type of network usage, approximate number of simultaneous active users, estimated number of packets and their sizes, the bandwidth you will receive from your internet service provider, and the need of encrypting traffic. The CCR2004 has a significantly high speed rate of data transmission and is able to accommodate a high number of active users and network nodes. As a result, university campuses and managed IT service providers that are required to serve a lot of active users can benefit from this hardware. Also, thanks to the SFB port arrangement on this device, as well as its performance in single tunnel mode and BGP feed processing, the CCR2004 has proven to be a highly useful device for ISPs and WISPs. VoIP service providers, data centers, government organizations and manufacturers who need to serve a large number of network nodes and also connect various service sites and different networks can also benefit from this Ethernet router. Moreover, hotels, medical centers and surveillance system providers as well as the agriculture and transportation industries can use this device to their advantage since the throughput of the CCR2004 can help establish rapid secure tunnels for reliable VPN connections across different site locations. As for networking solutions, the CCR2004 is quite efficient in establishing centralized and site-to-site -site VPNs. Its capacity of serving a large number of active users on the network makes it suitable as a wireless controller and its near 40 GB per second throughput turn it into a powerful device for firewall and online security configurations as an edge router. And finally, the notable processing capacity of the CCR2004 concerning different dynamic protocols makes it quite capable for BGP and OSPF related activities. Many thanks for watching this video. For the time being, this episode concludes our review of Microtech Ethernet routers to this date and will indeed be watchful of any upcoming products in the future. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and look forward to receiving your feedback and suggestions. Make sure you've subscribed to our YouTube channel since we'll be moving forward to other Microtech device categories in the coming weeks. Thank you for being with us. We hope to see you in future tutorials. Until then, stay safe and take care.